The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. This is an opinion-based program. On an all-new Detrial, failure at the UNHRC. Once again, Sri Lankan diplomacy fails Sri Lanka. 22 members fueled by allegiance to the United Kingdom and the United States supported a country-centric resolution that's clearly interfering in a sovereign nation's internal matters. Led by the United States, the UK and the EU, the resolution, while calling to promote accountability and reconciliation, clearly violated the UNHRC's mandate by poking its fingers into internal matters mooted by the United Kingdom's constituency needs. Despite the rhetoric, India again failed Sri Lanka as well on the world stage. Four Asian nations also abstained from voting. What does this mean? Does this call for a change in foreign policy strategy? Has the non-allied stand cost us friends? For insight and analysis, tonight I'm joined by the State Minister for Regional Cooperation, Taraka Balasuriya. From Studio 24, with opinions that matter, it's time to get real with Mahesh Jani. And a very good evening everyone. Welcome to Thursday's edition of Get Real, where our conversation affecting everyday Sri Lankans continue. Well, tonight, we take stock of the events that unfolded on Tuesday night, where a board at the UNHRC once again went against Sri Lanka. What does it mean as uh, the country tries to regain its place on the world stage? Well, in my opening statement this evening, the farce of human rights. Make no mistake, my dear friends, we were never going to win the vote at the UNHRC. That was set in stone very prior to this event ever happened. Why? Well, money, in this case the LTT propaganda money, hard at work. Anyhow, we need to break this down and understand what happened. We all know that this resolution clearly violated the sovereignty of Sri Lanka as an independent nation. Why? Well, many articles of the resolutions were calling to do certain things that are out of their mandate. Commenting about our COVID operations, telling us to keep elections, having issues pertaining to what the president was doing. It's as if the United Kingdom is so concerned that we are incapable of doing things without them. There are two areas of failure in my opinion. Now take a look at this map. Sri Lanka currently has around 67 missions scattered all across the world. The duty? Well, do good to Sri Lanka. Now take a look at the number of countries who voted against us. Clearly, you can see that our diplomats, who are being maintained by our tax, has completely failed in taking our credible case to those leaders and securing their support. Bilateral relations matters, diplomacy matters, and this is a clear example that this bunch failed this country at this crucial time. See, this is happening with all the evidence that's favorable to Sri Lanka. Credible evidence, which you've seen from time to time even in this program, proves Sri Lanka's innocence. It's the duty of this lot to take that information to the world's leaders and convince them to support us. What were they doing? Especially ones in the four Asian nations who abstained from voting, Indonesia, Japan, India and Nepal. We have missions in all those countries. Well, these four were smoking cigars and having a party while we were getting hammered in Geneva. Diplomats who claim to be our representatives in these countries clearly failed in doing their job. I would also like to ask this question, what on earth did happen to our foreign minister? What did he do to take Sri Lanka's case to the world? We only saw him uh, during the televised speech he made at the beginning of the UNHRC session. And after that, 
missing in action. And then there is the Indian factor. India, despite this government, continuously saying that we will do to keep India's interests safeguard when dealing with uh, security and economic matters. India pulled out another spineless act while talking about, uh, while taking their interests into account, sacrificed us on the chopping block. India deserted us at the time we needed them the most. Typical, isn't it? On the other hand, China proved to be the friend you needed when you needed them the most. When Sri Lanka takes refuge at the heel of the nation who really cares about us, India will only come talking about the the 2,500 years relationship, blah, 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 and all that nonsense. Action is what matters. Well, lots more to uh, discuss uh, with regard to our foreign policy and how we need to change uh, that from now onwards. For that, uh, I will shortly be joined by the State Minister of uh, Regional Cooperation, Tharaka Bala Surya. But before that, we get to that, get into that discussion. I'm now joined by Suzanne Shanali, who is standing by, to tell us about the failed Indian factor and uh, what to expect as the country progresses. Shanali, good evening. Yes, good evening Mahesh. As per the UNHRC vote regarding the resolution brought against Sri Lanka, 22 countries have voted in favour of imposing a resolution to empower UN to collect and restore information that could lead to international criminal proceedings. The vote that took place on the 23rd of March has confirmed the infirmity of Sri Lanka's foreign policy regarding this issue. It is disappointing that two SARC countries abstained from voting as per the bond of SARC countries, representing their unity is essential in such a situation. The most concerning fact would be that Japan, India, Nepal and Indonesia were among the countries that were abstained from voting. It is clear that Sri Lanka has shared contagious relationships with the above mentioned countries when taking into account our foreign relations with them. Especially considering Japan as past history proves their immense support in developing infrastructure in Sri Lanka. The result of this vote reflects the need to reconstruct our foreign policy. Sri Lanka must pay attention to neighbour countries and effectively balance foreign policies to successfully win against westernized conspiracies. India is the most crucial country for Sri Lanka to uphold foreign relationships with. Sri Lanka has faced numerous advantages and disadvantages due to being situated so close to India. An example of this would be the 13th Amendment that was influenced by India in order to establish a federal system and separate the power from central government. This political reform highly affected the unity of Sri Lanka and allowed India to intervene in the ongoing civil war in the period of 1987. However, it can be considered that during During this period, our foreign relationship was extremely narrow and influenced by America-based Western countries. That narrow foreign relationship directly affected Sri Lanka's social, political and cultural context. However, during the fourth Elam war period, there was a broad foreign relationship held by Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, after emerging victorious from the civil war, Sri Lanka mismanaged and failed to sustain the broad foreign policy the country had during the fourth Elam war period. When President Rajapaksa agreed, Uh, that he would address the alleged uh, grievances and the uh, violations alleged of uh, human rights and international uh, humanitarian law. He in fact did start the process. Uh, For instance, the Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission, uh, subsequently the Paranagama Commission. Uh, But in a broader sense of building bridges Uh, strengthening uh, uh, the reconciliation process. For instance, setting up the Office of the Missing Persons, the Office of Reparations and so on. Those recommendations have not been actually implemented on the ground. Western influence has immensely affected the Eurasian region throughout history. Currently, the political trend is deviating from Western countries and is being centralized in the region due to the rise of China and India. Therefore, as a country in this region, we should reconstruct our foreign policy according to the changes of the new war order. Sri Lanka has to take special care in managing China and India, as these countries will be the two biggest pillars of the world economy in the near future. Their unremitting support should be received by Sri Lanka in order to successfully avoid the title of a developing country. However, Sri Lanka's loss at the UNHRC vote directly reflects that our country must reconfigure its position in India by reconstructing the foreign policy. Making a foreign policy is not as easy a task as baking a cake. 
and the impact of losing a vote in UNHRC is not about imposing sanctions. The result of the vote is that the UN will create an office with an annual budget of USD 2.8 million to collect information about war crimes and human rights violations that occurred during the war. However, according to the statement given by Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardena, without the consent and accepting of the country concerned, it cannot be implemented. As per the current situation, there will be more resolutions and impact coming from westernized countries to this region and most of them will target a developing country like Sri Lanka. Therefore, planning and implementing measures at the right time will be a correct method to avoid such problems. And we believe India and Nepal for various domestic and external compulsions remain abstain from voting. So we do consider even that is not for the resolution and therefore we do not see a division in the South Asia region or there is a requirement for a major shift in our foreign policy in our near region. Of course we have to work with other countries more. We need more economic engagement. We need to empower our people more economically. All that we have to do. Might reconstructing our foreign policy is an essential step that should be taken by the current government and balancing the politically powerful countries in this region is the most responsible job bestowed upon diplomats in Sri Lanka. Therefore, in the future, to win resolutions like this, Sri Lanka should implement necessary actions using a foreign policy that is beneficial to the country. Over to you, Maish. Well, indeed, uh, re-strategizing our relationship with India seems to be a good factor at this moment. Zan Shanali reporting there. Thank you very much. We will take a short commercial break. When we return, the State Minister of Regional Cooperation, Tarak Balasuri, will be here. This is Get Real. and be back in a moment. to get real well tonight's conversation we need to get some context into what happened foreign relations how are we going to go forward understand uh, the global uh, conditions global situation where things are changing a little bit and where will Sri Lanka stand on those issues uh, the vote at the UNHRC went against Sri Lanka uh, but the title was you know promoting uh, human rights and uh, accountability uh, very very tactfully and if you read that entire resolution they are pretty much interfering in our internal affairs that's a fact it's not some myth we are trying to you know get you to understand it's a fact educate yourself read the resolution and try to understand why is the United Kingdom so interested in poking their finger after a lull of five years is it because uh, they don't agree with the decision Sri Lankans took uh, in, in November of uh, 2019 to have a president with the name Raj Paksha. So here we are once again a resolution that goes uh, against us. Let's talk about foreign relations. Let's understand uh, what we can do in order to change that mentality in the world, especially in the West. Um, for that I've invited uh, a State Minister for Regional Cooperation, Taraka Balasuria. Um, in another word, he's pretty much the State Minister for Foreign Affairs. <laughs> and here he is. Uh, good to see you, sir. Uh, we are meeting for the first time here on this program. Good to have you. Thank you. What Thank happened you. in Geneva? Well, I think uh, what happened in Geneva was what, what was expected. Uh, we expected uh, that the, the Western powers will come together uh, and uh, there will be a block vote. Uh, for the, uh, the Western countries um, and uh, we are somewhat um, uh, and then uh, if you look at the voting patterns in uh, all of the uh, the Western European countries uh, voted for the resolution if you look at the, uh, the Eastern European countries uh, all of the Eastern European countries except one country Russia uh, voted for the resolution 
and then, then if you look at uh, some of the uh, the, uh, the African countries, and then if you look at uh, that uh, two African countries voted for the resolution, two against the mm -hmm. resolution, and the rest abstained. And in uh, from the Asian countries, I, I, um, I believe five countries uh, voted for the resolution, uh, two against the resolution, and uh, six abstained. So what we are what we are seeing is that the number of countries which abstains in this, this sort of resolutions has increased over the years. Uh, so most countries, I think, are taking the view uh, that they don't want to get involved in uh, the internal affairs of, um, the internal of, uh, affairs of uh, other countries. Uh, and also some of the countries which uh, voted uh, for the resolution, for example, uh, the representative from uh, um, Brazil. Uh, in uh, in their speech uh, was uh, emphasized the fact that, the, the, the res that they believe that the resolution goes uh, over and beyond the mandate uh, given to the uh, UN Human Rights Council, uh, but nonetheless they uh, voted uh, for the uh, resolution. And uh, so uh, when a resolution against a smaller country is forwarded by these, the big Western powers, uh, some countries uh, take the view, although they are against the resolution, if they uh, vote um, against the res uh, resolution, there can be economic uh, uh, repercussions. Yeah. So I, the safer bet I think some countries, these countries take Just is that they, they abstain uh, from voting. Uh, so I, I think it, you know, we did well uh, considering the fact that um, uh, most countries, uh, mo uh, most countries uh, did not uh, did not uh, they they did not support the resolution. So if you look at the majority of the countries, the 25. Uh, 25 countries uh, did not support the resolution. So there is uh, some moral uh, ground uh, when when the majority of, of the countries have have not agreed with the uh, uh, resolutions for us to stand by. What's going to happen now with this resolution being adopted by the UNHRC? I mean, like, are we going to see embargoes uh, uh, implemented on Sri Lanka? Are, are we like, you know, one of those nations where everybody is going to look at us like we are part of like North Korea or something? Is that where we are heading to? No, it's very unlikely. Uh, what will happen is that uh, uh, as the uh, re resolution has called for, a uh, mechanism will be created in Geneva in order to uh, collect information uh, pertaining, pertaining to the um, the last days of the uh, war, and then also for them to uh, wait. Didn't they have that information before? Well, we have it through the. I, I suppose they have the information, and then also uh, we also have furnished certain information uh, to counter it. Um, yeah, but a formal mechanism will be uh, will be established in Geneva, where they will be uh, monitoring the human rights activities in Sri Lanka. And if needed, at a, at a future instance, that uh, uh, these information can be furnished to uh, other other institutes to take uh, legal action, uh, which can also be unilateral actions from you know uh, individual countries. Uh, but there won't be any multilateral multi multilateral action uh, through uh, through uh, organizations such as the UN, because uh, such action would have to be uh, get the approval of the the Security Council. So which that's not going to happen. China um, and Russia are friends of Sri Lanka, and uh, they will they will uh, object to object to it. So uh, veto what, it. Yeah. So I think uh, what we are seeing is uh, we are seeing uh, uh, the the north south divide globally. Uh, it's all the the um, former uh, imperialistic countries uh, are. Uh, stamping their ground uh, in uh, different ways in order to uh, meet their, uh, the political, uh, in order to meet up with their political objective. Uh, before I get into uh, all those uh, political uh, conversation with regard to what's happening globally and how we can tweak our foreign policy in order to meet those needs, uh, Minister, I wanted to know um, one of the things that the people here in Sri Lanka is scared of is all these countries ganging up and hammering us and then our economic prosperity, our growth as a nation, all that is going to stand still. This is exactly what they did prior to 2015. They, they push towards the level of regime change, which was very evident. If somebody does the research, it, it shows. 
are we heading for something like that as well uh, after this resolution coming in because it is very clear these western nation doesn't want sri lanka to grow uh, for us to be independent for us to be be, be strong in, in in as as a, a sovereign country so how uh, what is your take on that is, is that where we are heading to no, I, i wouldn't say that uh, you know i wouldn't go to the extent saying that the, you know the western countries wouldn't want to see sri lanka grow or have make economic progress um, i think they are more interested in you know establishing their uh, interest uh, what are their interests well it's it's mainly uh, you know geopolitical um, and, and if you look at the the voting patterns of some of the the regional countries why they have abstained or, or why they have voted uh, for the resolution it's always uh, geopolitical i mean a good example would be a country something like you know uh, south korea uh, now south korea's uh, main concern is its, its security uh, the, uh, with uh, its neighbor having uh, nuclear weapons so in that context what's more important for them you know uh, uh, would it be more important to uh, judge the resolution by the merits of the uh, resolution no would it be more important to ensure that they are in, for them to uh, ensure their national security so you touched on a very key point there everybody all these countries who voted against us and who actually abstain looked after their own interests yes uh, when are we going to do that You when are we going to uh, take care of our own interest and not entertain these kinds of bogus resolutions and war crimes and all those kinds of things and not even take part in those things? We, uh, uh, I think, you know, uh, we have, you know, uh, we have rejected the, uh, the res- resolution. Uh, but irrespective of if we reject the resolution or not, the uh, UNHRC, they do periodic reviews of UN members. so uh, our uh, take on it is it's better to uh, to uh, even through informal chats or you know uh, explain our position and also the uh, the progress which we have been have made uh, according to uh, progress which we had made uh, as for human rights uh, on, on on human rights uh things such as you know we rehabilitated the 11000 mm-hmm. uh, ltt cards uh, nobody talks about that uh, the demining has been i think you know probably about 99 95% of yeah. uh, you know the demining has been uh, done already and the the, the settlement of the uh, the uh, the uh, idps and the you know, also the uh, lands has, has been given back to uh, to the, the original owners uh, about 97 95 mm-hmm. 97% of the land has been uh, given back to the original owners so we have so we feel that you know we need to engage with whatever the party uh, and uh, show our uh, case um if they're not listening well yes if they're not irrespective of the fact that they're not listening it doesn't mean that you know we need to uh, we need to stop dialogue uh, if we uh, stop dialogue that uh, then even uh, even uh, us presenting our viewpoint uh, would be uh, would be uh, would not be accommodated so uh, i we feel that you know we need to have have a dialogue and we need to improve our human rights not because the western powers are saying that we need to improve, improve our uh, uh, human rights i always say this that we need to improve our human rights as a, uh, uh, as it's the right thing to do um, but we need to improve our, uh, where hum- where are the areas that we need to improve uh, you, you, if by any chance all these accusations they made uh, i think around 3 or 4 i i some so all being established the office of missing person established you know repatriation uh, all, all those uh, things have have taken place there, there is you know we've done it yeah. uh, we we like you just said idb settled the mining all this is happening so yeah. what are, what are these human rights they can't be coming after us and saying the president is appointing military people into into civilian position that is the president's right because he came from a mandate he, he said he is going to do those things yes. how can they come up and poke their finger and say something like this and why are we keeping our mouth shut about it we haven't certainly kept our mouth shut about it uh, we have expressed that you know all uh, forums including uh, one on ones with the you know the, the said the ambassadors of the uh, the co group uh, it is the president's prerogative to uh, mm-hmm. appoint whoever uh, he uh, wishes to and then uh, we have also uh, stated that the, uh, the members which who have been appointed are uh, experts in that yeah. field uh, for example uh, the 
my secretary, the uh, uh, Admiral Kolobge. Yeah. Uh, he's a professor in international. He has a, a professor in, of international yeah. relations. Uh, so uh, you know, it is our prerogative to um, appoint whoever we have, and uh, so we have expressed our uh, uh, concern. But. Um, uh, what they are talking about is mainly about the accountability a a aspect of it. Uh, to see, it's just. I mean, it's clear they don't like the name Rajapaksa. Uh, that was one of the biggest issues uh, they apparently had. They didn't. Uh, there was no Rajapaksa in the past five years, so nobody talked about it. They didn't even bother, you know, looking towards Sri Lanka. Even here, we the people elects one and then uh, comes up with another bogus thing. Say, what exactly do they want for us to do? Saying, okay, this is the issue we have. What what are they saying? I don't see that. Uh, the, the, well, uh, it's a very good question because what they want to do is even if we do it. Uh, <laughs> their, their, their targets keep changing, exactly, uh, and then the goalposts keeps changing. So uh, we are also not quite sure of you know uh, uh, their the ultimate uh, end game. Uh, now, for example, when we had uh, a chat with the uh, certain ambassadors who who I can't diverge the names out, yeah. uh, they were very hopeful that you know the president uh, would appoint the, uh, the the presidential commission of inquiry, uh, and once the presidential commission of inquiry was appointed, uh, the uh, certain representation was made on the composition of the uh, the, uh, the the uh, commission of presidential uh, uh, the uh, uh, presidential commission of inquiry. Um, then we did change the uh, the composition also in order to meet, meet those requirements. But then, if you look at the report from the uh, the uh, high commissioner's report and uh, also <laughs> the resolution, yeah. uh, we Completely feel that uh, they preempt saying that you know they they preempt any action taken by the uh, the, uh, the the commission uh, the, uh, because they said that you know they don't have faith in the in the commission. So uh, so it's a very good point to say that you know whatever we do. Uh, Whatever do whatever we do, uh, that the goalpost keeps changing. It, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Minister, this is an unfair game. They are not serving us from the same spoon. They're say, uh, serving the United States, the UK, the ultimate uh, war criminals in the world right now, who are actually engaged uh, actively in in wars that is happening right now. There are human rights violations. We can go to Guantanamo Bay issue, this and that. You don't see the Human Rights Commissioner having a spine to go after them. Yeah. And then here they are, uh, you know, ha hammering us. Why hasn't other countries in that commission as any kind of you know moral right to just stand up and say this is not what we are here to do UNHRC's mandate is not that and a country like ours which we don't have the superpower or the, uh, the ability to you know just pretty much neglect everything we are not Singapore we are not the United States we are not the UK why 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 haven't why have we failed in getting that message across and actually getting people to you know get on our bandwagon that, that message was you know uh, spelled out by several members, including countries like Cuba and uh, countries like Venezuela, where they uh, felt that, um, uh, we have the, let's say, the country-specific resolutions most uh, are not the best way, uh, particularly if you don't have the support of the country, uh, best way to move forward. So there was many countries who took a principled position that you know they opposed the country-specific re resolution. Even countries like in, uh, in Japan, you, which took a quite a moderate view, uh, was uh, not very pleased with a country-specific spec uh, re resolution. Um, but I think you know, at the, uh, ultimately, you know, the geopolitics is what matters. Uh, so, so I think we need to um, see how we can best move forward from there. So, Indeed. All right, uh, let's take a short commercial break. I want to talk about the India-China factor. How are we going to tackle this? Because this resolution is not going to go away. It's going to keep coming back uh, at the next year's council. Also, they will be start, uh, you know, mourning and uh, complaining and doing all those kinds of things. So, how are we going to manage that? That could be another resolution uh, in the pipeline uh, for sure. Um, Minister of Regional Cooperation, State Minister of Regional Cooperation, Tarakamara Sri is here. Uh, this is Get Real. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone to 
get real. I'm in conversation with the State Minister for Regional Corporation, Tarak Balasuri. We've been talking about the UNHRC matter and our foreign relations. Uh, Minister, I want to come into the um, Indian factor, uh, where India continuously is a dominant power in, in, in South Asia. They have the ability to pretty much clean this slate for us on a global stage. If they, want, if they are interested in finding out is there accountability in Sri Lanka? Is there uh, uh, accountability uh, after the war? What is happening to the Tamil people? All that they could sit down with the Sri Lankan government, whereas this Sri Lankan government has continuously said we will not do anything that threatens Indian interests. And that has been the principal goal from the get-go. You don't see that. When we need India the most, India lets us down. How, I mean, going forward, we have a lot of economic relationship, we have a lot of geopolitical uh, relationship. How are you going to tackle this? Because this, uh, this is a sour note at the end of the day. Uh, what happened, uh, how can we, in good faith, continuously keep engaging, uh, knowing that we have to do that, yet we know they are not on our side when things, are, when push, uh, you know, things get uh, very you know, complicated. Well, I wouldn't say that, you know, they're not on our side. I wouldn't say that, you know, um, I wouldn't go to that extent. I, I, I think, you know, India has supported us. Uh, uh, but as far as the voting of the resolution goes, that, you know, they haven't uh, either been neutral or, um, you know, and, and once they voted against us. Um, but um, I went through... Did you expect this? We expected this. Um, uh, but I also went through, you know, some of the, uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, the newspaper articles which appeared today um, in the Indian papers uh, and yesterday. And then, if you look at the uh, the newspaper articles, they, are, they were very critical of India's stand, um, particularly the Tamil Nadu uh, politicians. Um, they felt that you know they had let, uh, you know let down the the Tamil community in uh, uh, in Sri Lanka. So. Um, we also have to be mindful of the fact that you know on April 9th there's an election uh, in uh, Tamil India. Nadu. Uh, so the, uh, the how the the central politics uh, and if you look at the I think the Indian politics the the BJP is probably uh, has for the first time since the 1940s and for the for the first time since the India Cong Congress I'm sorry for since 1980s under uh, you know Indira Gandhi uh, the BJP is uh, is I think uh, turning out to be uh, uh, not uh, to be a uh, um, a party which has uh, established power pretty much in all of uh, India. So uh, the present government, I would think that you know they want to make inroads into in, into the uh, into the um, the uh, the power base or the number of yeah. seats in uh, Tamil Nadu. But I don't want to speculate too much on it. But India, we did have uh, many uh, discussions with India uh, pertaining to uh, the uh, Geneva, and uh, you know, uh, they have their own issues uh, pertaining to. Uh, there's a large electorate in India who feel that it is their moral duty to, to support uh, the Tamil cause in Sri Lanka. So I think uh, India is mindful of. Uh, uh, those uh, concerns when taking decisions. If India wants to come back and say, okay, we want to sort this matter, we want to sort the, the accountability matter, human rights matter, and instead of uh, letting the Western powers come and interfere in this region and try to run amok, if India comes and says, okay, we want to sit down with the Sri Lankan government, we want to have our own commission, we want to have our own investigation in order to find out whether is there uh, human rights abuse, uh, abuses uh, that's happening here in Sri Lanka, whether uh, we have we done what is needed for the Tamil people, because if they have a lot of concern with regard to the Tamil community, then they have the ability to do that. Would the Sri Lankan government be open for something like that? Well, such a uh, uh, we will be very mindful if we, whatever the country wants to uh, uh, country wants to get involved in uh, domestic uh, issues. You know, we that's not that's for the Sri Lanka and Sri Lankan people to uh, uh, to determine that. I don't think it is up to any country to say, okay, we are going to get involved over here and then we are going to you know carry out the domestic mechanisms for uh, that. And, and I don't think India would take such a stand. Uh, so. Uh, uh, we need to uh, ensure that you know our sovereignty at, at all stages are uh, um, protected. Uh, 
you and uh, this president has said from the get go saying that his policy with regard his foreign policy is going to be more of a non ally he is not going to you know he is going to stay remain neutral uh, this has been uh, his operating uh, point um, china and india is going to be a key factor uh, united states is getting into the mix we thought uh, it's not going to be a problem because of covid and and the issues they have uh, in the united states but clearly not so they want to get involved they want to be part of uh, all the affairs around the world they want to get back into policing the world uh, india and china both are very much strongly present here in sri lanka how are you how is the gotabi rajpaksa administration is going to tackle this i don't think there's an issue uh, with india and you know, china being present in sri lanka i mean uh, you know a lot of people look at the india and china's relationship uh, as one dimensional uh, but if you look at trade i think in india's biggest trading partner now is uh, china and then if you look at the eu's biggest trading partner is not the united states anymore now it's china if you look at the united states because uh, you know uh, because uh, trading partner is also china so uh, i think that's you know he, uh, i i i see that you know some indian uh, politicians and diplomats maybe we uh, maybe uh, view uh, uh, china as a rival and uh, uh, but um, i i also think that you know there are certain certainly large um, a fraction of indians look at china as a competitor and some fraction look at china as a partner also because i think you know irrespective of political differences which uh, which uh, you, you have um you can certainly there's a lot of economic mm -hmm. uh, growth which both countries can sustain if they work together so i feel that uh, in future uh, the economic dynamics will be reflected by this and uh, more uh cooperation between the, the two superpowers will possibly be, be seen but you understand the fact that more and more chinese presence comes to the south of india which is sri lanka it is going to be a security concern for india and they would be wanting to know what's going on uh we we don't we are not going to omit the chinese connection or we are not going to say china don't come or anything of that sort because we are going to harness that relationship as well because they were the only friends at the end of the day if we've seen you know in this particular vote even they were the ones who stood up for us whereas india didn't uh so that kind of a relationship going forward you don't you all expect anything you know for them to side uh you know india hoping that we will side with them china hoping we will side with them uh that balance is is going to be very tricky to maintain how what is the strategy there well it's simply um they it, it, it simply we are very concerned about india's security concerns so you know we would not uh for instance uh, we have a 20 point uh, foreign policy directive and we uh will we will carry out our foreign policy based on those uh, the 24th uh, uh, 20 point uh, directive and uh, both uh, my secretary and the minister and i and i myself and or and or again have stated that we are very concerned about you know if another another uh, let's say um, a country wants to have a military base or something with the implications on that on india of course we are not going to allow uh, such things because as one indian uh, foreign minister said you know uh, 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 i'm sorry one indian uh, foreign secretary said that you know sri lanka they view it as a aircraft carrier just off the coast of india uh planes if you live in from uh, sri lanka it takes only a few well, minutes a yeah, few, yeah, few exactly. minutes to go to go to the indian air territory uh so uh, we are concerned about that but as far as economic uh, ties are going you know we uh want to develop economic ties with uh, all countries um but i must also stress that the 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 uh the chinese economic model uh, which uh, they are carrying out uh, ha has um, has over the 20 or 30 years has uh, proved to be more successful than the uh, the uh, the western, western model or, or the uh, the uh, the, uh, the indian model or for, uh, that is instance the sri lankan model uh, on average during the last 20 30 30 years china has you know outgrown uh, the united states by two or three times yeah. so uh, although 
India or, or the West might uh, uh, might view that you know we have a close China connection. It's not the case. We, we view all our countries we give equal the weightage to all, all the countries. We are right now even looking after our people's interest. We, we, our we, mainly look, we, we, uh, we entirely look at our people's interest. But let's say when there are certain tenders and all those things, the Chinese companies are more far more competitive, uh, far more competitive than let's say Indian company or the uh, the Western company. I want to talk about uh, our missions abroad. Uh, what happened? Why weren't they more effective in getting, getting, uh, convincing those nations uh, trying to set a case against? Like I spoke uh, in, in my monologue. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. Uh, I'm in conversation with the uh, State Minister for Regional Cooperation, Tarek Balasu. This is Get Real. We'll be right To get real, I'm in conversation with the State Minister for Regional Cooperation, Tarek Abbas. So we will be talking about the fallout after the UNHRC vote, uh, future foreign policy, and exactly how we're going to tackle India-China relations. Uh, Minister, we have around 52 uh, missions abroad, uh, yeah. Sri Lankan mi missions abroad. Uh, 65. 65. Yeah. Um, so uh, 65 missions abroad, and out of those 65, we have uh, uh, you know crucial ones in these uh, locations where these countries, uh, I mean, those ambassadors, those high commissioners' uh, duty is to have cordial relations with that particular government, state our case, bring them the facts and actually sw uh, sway their thinking towards a favorable one towards Sri Lanka. This is pretty much being our brand ambassador uh, in those countries. That did not happen. Uh, countries like Nepal, uh, Indonesia, South Korea, uh, all these countries who have a bigger population with regard to trade, economic, and all those kinds of relations, uh, those ambassadors failed us. Why, why weren't we more thorough in getting them doing the work, not, not in January, maybe from the get-go, try to convince, have, have very close relations with those governments, try to convince them, you know, this is the reality that is happening, rather than believing the bogus uh, BS that has been thrown by the UNHRC High Commissioner? Yeah, but I think it will be, you know, I think it, it will, what you're saying is correct if we, yes, it's on the assumption that uh, the voting is based on the merits of the, uh, the resolution. But as I mentioned, the voting is not based on the merits of the resolution. The votings, there are the geopolitical uh, issues. Now, all the countries, uh, such as Nepal, I can tell, tell you, give you one particular re reason or the influence by a particular country, which uh, might have prevented uh, Nepal uh, um, uh, voting in favor of uh, in favor of us or against the resolution. So, all these countries, let's say, I mean, I don't want to speculate, yeah, speculate yeah. on other countries. It, it wouldn't be uh, you know fair of me. Uh, but I, I mean, I think you know everybody knows the case with the South Korea, for example. You know, that they have security concerns. You have a neighbor who has nuclear weapons, and then if you are going to fly a, a nuclear bomb to the Seoul, then you know you're going to be dependent on the Americans. So when these countries vote, uh, they vote not necessarily on the uh, ne necessarily on the merits of it. Our ambassadors um, uh, now, our ambassadors, I think, did a. a did a you know, very good job uh, in keeping in, and we do keep the uh, our the counterpart, counterparts on LDT activity, on terrorist uh, terrorist activity, uh, 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 keep them uh, aware right throughout the uh, right throughout the year. Um, uh, but nonetheless, uh, unfortunately, uh, these uh, 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 now uh, the resolution itself does how, whatever the efforts we put, you know, uh, it uh, it is. And not a reflection on the vote itself. So the vote has more geopolitical elements, and that's why the voting is the voting. Why? Why haven't the? Why hasn't the government? And your, what you say makes sense. Uh, you know, uh, most of these countries will vote based on what they could get from these powerful nations, and yeah. that is that is a fact. 
why has the Sri Lankan uh, government or the the the, the, the uh, you know communicate this fact to the Sri Lankan community? Because the picture, you know, for 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 real on the ground, everybody who's reading a newspaper headline or something thinks like, oh my God, uh, Sri Lanka is done again. Here we go back into some you know era that we will be completely cornered and isolated. The, everything in foreign policy which we do or whatever is not you know advertised or communicated. You know, it, it, it's Sh uh, don't you think it should uh, happen? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think you know foreign policy. You know what I, what I, the discussions which I let's say have with the core group. You know I need I should come to media and then you know I had these discussions and advertise that you know that's a it's subtle and you know and that's it, diplomacy it, and it's done in a in a in a certain manner uh, over the years. So I think you know it'll continue. Uh, um, but um, uh, but also now I think you know there's uh, there's a perception that you know we um, uh, now just because these countries uh, brought this resolution against us and some countries you know uh, voted uh, you know uh, voted uh, against us there's a perception that these countries are enemies of Sri Lanka yeah uh, I don't think that's a, a fair perception either there's a lot of uh, trade which goes on between the, these countries and uh, they might not have been friends of Sri Lanka in the manner which we expect them to be uh, our friends uh, uh, or what is expected of a friend uh, they might not have uh, you know uh, they might not have delivered it uh, but uh, you know um, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't call them you know the necessarily the enemies of uh, uh, the, the country because there's Let's take, for example, now let's take the United States. We have very cordial ties. You know, we cooperate on defense matters, uh, particularly in things such as like uh, counterterrorism. Uh, we with the uh, the United Nations, with the uh, with the uh, the British government uh, on things such as you know drugs and all those things. We uh, continuously collaborate on, uh, with them on things such as environment, on things such as business, uh, other matters we uh, collaborate them with. Uh, so we feel that um, we, we, I, I don't, I, you know, yes, we need to work on uh, the differences with, our, with, uh, with these uh, countries, with the core group, and then uh, we need to uh, come to a, a, you know, a common point and then have some closer, closure. But that does. I don't think we need to take that attitude, saying that, uh, well, you didn't vote for us, so you know we are going to close our shop for you all, and then you know I think that will be detrimental to uh, to our existence. I, I understand. I have the, the the liberty and the freedom to scream whatever I want, and I know you all are the ones who have to actually uh, walk the fine line and try to keep these uh, countries and uh, you know pretty much interest of Sri Lanka at at the utmost level, and then still try to negotiate a, a better deal. Uh, finally, um, we're running out of time, uh, Minister. Uh, will this government continuously engage with the UNHRC going forward? We, we will engage with all organizations, including the, uh, the UNHRC, and we will see, uh, you know, how uh, we will see what the, the, the end game is, or what, what, what they are going to come, uh, uh, you know, what they are going to try and come at, and then if we feel that it will be. Uh, um, detrimental to the country, we will take necessary steps at, at, at that stage. Uh, and also, uh, and, and all these countries, for example, you know, countries like England uh, the uh, and the United States, uh, uh, what really happened at the end of the uh, end of the um, uh, the war, they know about it. They, they have, uh, if you look, I mean, they don't need to get information from, from us. us yeah. uh, if you look at the reports of the British uh, the military attache, yeah, or yeah, if you look yeah. at the uh, who was serving at that time, and if you look at these even certain statements from firm former ambassadors such as um, uh, Robert, uh, Robert Blake, yeah. and then if you look at um, if you look at uh, other UN agencies, now remember that yeah. you know this UN Human Rights is only one agency, 
and people tend to think yeah. yeah when you tend people tend to think that because this UN human rights place a certain way that you know all the other agencies are uh, similar in their approach which is not and if you look at uh, you know the, the use of child soldiers or uh, the reports by the UNICEF if you look at uh, the ICRC reports uh, you know towards the end of the week, lot a lot of these reports were extremely detrimental to uh, the LTT and and they give a true reflection of what yeah. was happening but unfortunately you know the, uh, so I think you know unfortunately these countries tend to keep this uh, these information down and then you know uh, and then uh, play up some other I, I understand uh, you are not uh, in a position to say that but in my opinion I think the reason for that is mainly because of the fact that the LTT funding the diaspora funding who are supporting the cause of the LTT is very much powerful in these particular the countries especially they are now affecting their voting patterns which in 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 return if you look at the, from Britain it is very clear that that the voting pattern the 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 impact that they have on that is one of the reasons for them to come start hammering on us on this world stage well uh, well yes there is uh, uh, the constituents have we, what we uh, felt this time that there was a lot of pressure from uh, let's say LTT or LTTE um, biased organizations yeah. so uh, there, there was a lot of uh, constituency pressure on their MPs uh, to take this up yeah. and then we feel let's say even in uh, uh, in the British Parliament there are um, you know few MPs who uh, repeatedly talk about the uh, the uh, the cr uh, crimes yeah. committed by the Sri Lankan government now you have uh, mr. Anton Balasingham uh, Anton Balasingham's wife living in uh, London. London and then you have um, uh, photo evidence and videotapes of uh, Adele Balasingham going and of course, uh, of course. we even the, raised that on this uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the suicide well. ones. So none of the the British MPs you know make uh, issue uh, uh, about that. And if you really want to uh, pro proscribe the the criminals, you know the, the, she's living exactly. in England, they can easily file a case. But we don't see that happening. State Minister for Regional Cooperation, Tharaka Balsari, it was, it was very uh, good to uh, speak to you and uh, pick your brain on what exactly happened and how we are going to go forward. Thank you very much for coming sir, and accepting our invitation. Hope to see you uh, later on, maybe uh, on a positive note perhaps. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Uh, all right, well that's all the time we have for you uh, tonight. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back again on Monday uh, with another episode of Get Real. See you then. Bye for now. Nobody in no road home I wanna be somebody to someone